Hello there fellow humans, today I'm going to have a look at the Progetto 46, but before that, let's have a look at the regular shop right here, or obviously the Iron Fest event is still ongoing, and you still have to spend a lot of money to get something that uh, is not worth it, so ignore that. Obviously the individual offers will be different for everybody, but small gold bundles like this can be quite useful, for example, like this. If you need a week, then this can be quite useful to purchase the resources here. I mean, they have a lot of gold boosters in them. It's pretty solid, I guess, but even though the prices are getting increasingly larger, so buy it before it gets even more expensive. That's my thing here. Also, a, a quick thing here, I'm currently editing the video and Wargaming released a new tank that I don't even have on the press account, so I can't actually review, but it's in crates, so don't buy this thing. I mean, what is this? It's, tier, it's a tier 8 with 2.2k DPM. Uh, it's a double shot, 270. It's like a tier 8 Helsing, sort of, with probably solid armor. I mean, I can't review the thing, because obviously I'm not stupid enough to buy it in crate. Just don't, just don't buy this. I might make a video on it if I get it on the press account, but honestly, this doesn't look very promising, to be honest. Now, we have the K91 burn right here, 15,000. I find that a little bit excessive. Now, 23.99 compared to 29 for the object. I think the K91 is also a very good tier 9 to pick up. But it's not quite as good as the 752. If you want to know more about 752, I made a specific video on that, so I won't be talking about it again. Now the time spies to this vehicle are locked, and you're not getting anything in the terms of boosters or anything of that sort, which is what you do get here with the object, which is why it's more expensive. So generally, I would recommend the object over the Kennedy one. Uh, but for example, if you don't have the extra money, the Kennedy one is also a great vehicle that you can pick up. Three shot auto loader, 2.7k DPM. 350 alpha damage, 7 degrees of gun depression. This is a quite solid vehicle as well that I can somewhat recommend. The Action X is a vehicle that a lot of people think is really good, but I just don't value this vehicle a lot. The Times 5 in here are unlocked, which is great. Also with the boosters, 8.5k here is a good price for the bundle. However, the vehicle itself is not one that I rate very well because 190 alpha damage for a heavy tank just is not very enjoyable. And you're going to have to play this vehicle in a way that just... It's just not very fun to play this tank. Obviously, it's got good armor, it's got 10 degrees of gun depression, it's got enough mobility, and it has 2,600 DPM, which is very nice, but the 190 alpha damage really put it down a lot. So I personally don't recommend this vehicle, but the bundle that it is in is good. The tank is second tier premium tank, in my opinion at least. The MX-30B, kind of the same. It's it's good. It's like, the, it's like the Action X as well. It's not bad. It's a solid tank, but it's just not the top of the pile that is absolutely worth it. And same with the 50B, uh, 30B here. So uh, 20k, again, bit excessive for 17.5k. This would be much better. But again, the 30B is a good vehicle, but it's not at the very top of the pile. That's where a KBZ 50T sits, for example. Obviously, 752, already talked about that. And we have the Rampant Raiders here. We can look at the bundle, 8.5k for just the Progetto and equipment. If you compare this to the Carnarvon Action X bundle for 8.5k with all the credit boosters and the unlocked times size, this is a much better bundle. And also, the Action X is an easier vehicle to play than the Progetto. So, if you're an advanced player, then the Progetto is a very great option. I will be playing it later, um, but the Action X... It's good enough. It's nowhere near a T-77, a T-42, a Type 57, all of those kind of things. But this is a good bundle. And uh, I still don't recommend it because of the tank. But just to compare, same price here. There is a lot less substance in the Brigetto bundle right here. So only buy it if you actually really want this vehicle. And again, I'll be going into detail on this later. And uh, the Astron Rex, you don't want that vehicle. Trust me. So T-22, still here as well. Again, good vehicle. It's like the 30B. It's not the the most upper tier, because that goes to the KBZ-50T, in my opinion. Um, but still, it is a solid tier 10. So if you really like the 62A in particular, then this would be a great addition to your garage. If you don't have any of the other Soviet medium tanks, the 62A, the Object 140, I would not recommend picking up one of these. Uh, if you like the Object 140 more than the T62A, I think the Object 907 would be the better premium version in that regard. But if you really like the 62A, the T22 is a wonderful addition to your garage. Obviously, if you can afford it, because remember, the purchasing of World of Tanks Blitz items should be very low on your list of life things to do. You know, like, there's goes like food, housing, insurance, 
shoes, and then all the way at the bottom, there's World of Tanks Blitz stuff. So, yeah, only buy this if you really have nothing else to spend your money on. And even this, even if you have nothing else to spend your money on, don't spend it on this, because this is awful. Like, Blaze is terrible, the 112 is terrible, and 8.5k is a thousand more than these vehicles used to cost. So, inflation even strikes things that don't have any actual real-life value. Because remember, you're not buying these, you're just licensing them. So, stay away from these, and now we're gonna go into the Progetto. Because this vehicle has one very big downside, and that is the 180 millimeters of standard penetration, which is not very nice. It doesn't have any armor, like... We don't even have to get into the armor. It doesn't have any. Obviously, at very obscure angles, you're going to be able to get some bounces. The gun mantlet can stop some shells. Um, so just aim for the hull. Ideally, aim for the sides of the mantlet. But generally, the armor of this vehicle doesn't really exist. It's about 80 millimeters, 60 millimeters. So not really much going on there. Uh, concealment of this thing is pretty good. It's very close to being a light tank in terms of concealment because it's 45% while stationary. 40 while moving, but remember, camo isn't worth anything if you're trying to shoot, because if you fire, your camo rating goes out the window anyway. 2.2k DPM, 2.4 interclip, not ideal, but it's fine. 2.5k interclip is perfectly fine, and then 240 alpha damage, solid aim time, okay dispersion, 9 degrees of gun depression, which is lovely, and then very good mobility, 22.8 power weight ratio, 38 top speed, so that is a very mobile vehicle right here so let's get it right into a battle and see how this is played see if it is worth getting all right let's get into a battle here and i would also like to apologize for the lack of any editing or something like that i currently don't have much time to do this oh that's i want to do that <laughs> i'm not really too invested at the moment because i got more important things to do but uh i'll get the shop reviews and the other videos out anyway because uh that's what i can do so maybe Maybe one of you is gonna learn something and get better at the game, and that's all that is actually important. Let's see, we're gonna go up here, peek this guy. I only got one shell loaded right now, I'm gonna back off, don't wanna peek into the M6 here. Then we're just gonna play this position, I'm gonna wait for him to peek out further, and then take a shot. Hide behind the rock here. I'm a bit sideways, which is not ideal, but now we're gonna just watch the T28, watch this side, and then whichever side peeks, I'm gonna not go towards. The LTG is going to make a mistake. I'm going to try to go off the track. I do hit it, and now he's gone. Now I'm going to reload. I'm going to turn straight now because there's not much threat from that side anymore. Most of the threat now comes from here, which means now I can focus on the KPZ. If he peaks, obviously 240 is not enough to put him off in one shell, so I have to go off the track again. And here comes the T28. So what I can do here, ideally, is reverse out completely. And then go around the outside to attack these guys from the back. But I also have this bush here that isn't going to provide me any cover. Uh, but I'm now just going to shoot the premium round. Obviously, 180 pens nowhere near enough, so I'm just going to go around the outside here. They don't have any other tank destroyers, which means that this traverse movement here is completely unopposed. There is nobody sitting back there uh, that could uh, have a problem with that. Obviously, the T23 uh, is still somewhere, uh, maybe AFK. But obviously a T23 has 160 alpha damage, so if I get shot by that, I'm not really bothered by it. So, there's the existence of the non-existent armor right there. Oh, there's the T23, just like I talked about. It's not really going to bother me. I know now he's camping in spawn. And now I can take this position, and I'm entirely behind the enemy team. And whenever these guys try to peek the tiger or whatever, they are going to get completely destroyed, which means they're now stuck up on the hill. And they're also very low, so this is basically just one right here. And I'm going to have to watch out for the T23, because despite him not being a very good tank, he still has more hit points and does have quite high DPM, so that could be quite a problem. And I'm just going to peek this side, take that position, and there we go. And there's a 111 somewhere, I assume, either AFK or sitting in the back there. Um, obviously, we know where the T23 was. So let's now go up here and try to peek that guy. Putting three shells into him, uh, repositioning, reloading, and then doing it again would be optimal here. Uh, there he is. He's trying to run away. Uh, see, e even tanks with no armor sometimes have armor. And now I'm just going to put these two in. And now he's low enough that I can fight him on the entire clip. Unless he's just going to try and disappear, then I can go after him. Go for two shells. Like that. One... Two, 
And now we can go for a full reload right here. We can use the regular repair kit because we don't have any dead crew members. And now he's just going to sit there. He's going to wait. I have the upper hand. Obviously, I have a much better vehicle than him. Um, obviously, the thing that he can do is because I have to peek. He's currently sitting there. I have to peek. He can take a shot and then remove himself from the situation. But because I have judged him to not be that great, I can simply just peek him and take him out just like that. So, not really competent as well for kills and uh, what I, I don't know what damage I am. I don't care. So, that's a Brigetto. Like... If you know what you're doing, if you're playing the game uh, with peak awareness and you know everything that's going on, uh, you can achieve this, basically. I just, I, I just played one battle. So, uh, yeah. Awareness is everything, basically. And if you have that, you're going to do really well in a vehicle like this. If you don't have the Brigetto and you're pretty good at the game, I can recommend it. I mean... It's probably going to come back cheaper, uh, so maybe don't buy it now. But I can definitely recommend purchasing the Progetto because this vehicle is very fun if you know what you're doing.